Good morning. The Lord be with you. It is good to be back with you. It's been three weeks since I've been up here, so I feel like I'm forgetting something. But um, thank you so much to Karen Anderson for jumping in last minute two weeks ago when I had COVID. This, this time around was no fun. Uh, so thank you, Karen, and thanks also to Mark Davis for covering for me last week as I was away at a conference. It is good to be here today. I want to say thanks also to those who are helping to lead worship this morning. On organ, we have Nancy Slezak. Our technical directors today are uh, Kyle Neville and his protégés, David Benish and uh, John Harper. Thank you. Our liturgist today is Becky Plymel, and our acolyte this morning is Kendall Nace. Thank you. Our chancel flowers were given this morning with love by Jane Witchie in memory of her husband, Ed, and in celebration of their 69th wedding anniversary. So we thank Jane for that. Today, uh, following worship, yarn group will be meeting in the lounge. This is for anyone who does anything with yarn or wants to learn. All are invited. And if you didn't bring anything to work on, you can just come hang out too. And then this afternoon, we hope that everyone will come back for Apple Fest from 3 to 5. Uh, there'll be lots of delicious uh, apple-based snacks, games, and crafts, and fun. Um, I can't be there. I have a friend who's being installed this afternoon, and I'm preaching at her service, so I can't be there. So you have to come and eat all the snacks for me. Uh, it will be a ton of fun. If you have any questions, you can talk to Jerry Graham or Lauren Nace or Karen Earhart, and any of them would love to answer questions. Anything to add? All right. Today is also birthday Sunday. It is the fourth Sunday of the month where we celebrate everyone who has a birthday. So if you have a September birthday, could you please stand? John's up there. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> oh, yes. Happy birthday. So let us sing happy birthday to our friends. Happy birthday. On birthday Sunday, we also take a special offering for RIP Medical Debt, a wonderful organization that buys medical debt portfolios for pennies on the dollar. And uh, we can help uh, pay for that medical debt and help those most in need. One dollar given to RIP covers about $100 in medical debt. And to date, we've forgiven over half a million dollars. So thank you so much. Um, there are envelopes in your pews, or you can simply designate a gift to them. This week, uh, women's Bible study kicked off last week, and they will continue to meet on Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 11, and that is led by Kathleen Davis. And the study this year is the Gospel of John. So all women and friends are invited. You don't have to be a member of this church. One of the lovely things is that we actually have women from a number of churches, and so we get a variety of perspectives. So again, that's Tuesday mornings from 9.30 to 11. Good fellowship good study, and there's always snacks, so it's a good time. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday, where we will celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper, not only as a community here, but we will remember all of those around the world who celebrate. So if you prefer to bring your communion elements to worship, those of you here in person, uh, please make sure to do so, otherwise we have elements provided. And those who are joining virtually, whatever you have is fine. Don't make a special trip to the store, and we will share in communion together. Next week is also the due date for Bundle Up Butler items. If you uh, would like to give brand new winter coats for children or adults or monetary gifts to the Center for Community Resources, those are due next week. And if you have any questions about that, you can uh, contact Kathleen Davis or Debbie Markew, our mission elders. And next week, we will also be collecting the Peace and Global Witness offering. For those of you here in person, there is some information in your bulletin about that. 
Of the money that we receive, 50% goes to the denomination to be used for peacemaking efforts around the world. 25% goes to the presbytery to do uh, toward peacemaking efforts in our area. And 25% stays with the congregation and we designate where it goes. And we have chosen to give it to Voice, which is um, a victim um, support for those who have suffered domestic violence here in Butler. And so um, we are very grateful to be able to do that. So please give generously to that. Uh, other things coming up, there is the adult basic Bible study beginning a week from Wednesday, October 4th uh, at 6.30 p.m. And it's stuff Jesus said. Kathleen's leading that one too, so I'm sure it'll be great. And all are welcome to that. The Garden Club will be meeting on Saturday, October 7th at 9 a.m. to do some trimming and some mulching. And everyone is invited of any age and any ability. Please come. Many hands make light work. If you have questions, you can talk to Pete or Jerry about that. And then, of course, we have our handbell dedication service on Sunday, October 8th at 2 o'clock p.m., and that is very exciting, so we hope you will all be here for that. Are there any other announcements to share this morning? Oh, Barb, yeah. Next week or two weeks? Okay, perfect. So book club will be meeting next Sunday following worship reading two short stories by Edgar Allan Poe. And you can talk to Barb for more information about that. Any other announcements this morning? And let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
please rise in body or spirit and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Come, all are welcome here for worship. Those who woke early and those who slept late, those who come often and those who don't. There is room for all of us in God's kingdom. Whether we are first or last or somewhere in between, there is more than enough grace to go around. Let us pray. Loving God, you leave us on a way to new life with a wisdom that is greater than ours. Meet us in this place and teach us your wisdom. Give us joy to receive it fully and courage to live it without shame. Through Jesus Christ, your wisdom and word. Amen. Scripture says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But those who confess their sin will be forgiven because of God's gracious mercy. So trusting in God's grace and forgiveness and acknowledging that we are all indeed sinners. Let us turn now to God in confession. Let us pray together. God of fruitful labor, Work sometimes brings out the worst in us. At home and school, at work and at church, and even in our relationship with you, we too easily question the blessings of others instead of being grateful for what we receive. Take away our bitterness. Help us to celebrate others. Give us grateful hearts, we pray. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, in Jesus Christ, God holds us in love, and we are all led together into a future filled with hope. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us now take a moment to greet one another with the peace of Christ. Those here in person, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. have any of our younger friends at home, you're invited to come a little closer for a time, especially for you. I've got all kinds of young friends here today. This is exciting. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Have you ever said, probably not, but have any of you ever said, oh, that's not fair? That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what might be something, a situation where you might say, that's not fair? Yeah, Anna? Yeah, if someone cheats in a game, and you, yeah, that's not fair, right? Oh, yeah, if you, yeah, if you really want something, but someone else gets it. Mm-hmm, Katie? Yeah, if you <laughs> Yes. If your sister gets a chocolate bar and you don't. Mom. I like that addition. That's not fair. Oh, you could cut the chocolate bar in half. That would make it fair, right? Yeah. So you would steal hers, so then she would say, Mom, that's not fair. Yeah. What else are situations where things are not fair? Okay, so if you're playing a game or doing an activity where you need to make something or build something, but someone gets more time than someone else? They made it, but they're just like cheating. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, that's not fair. Yeah. So let me give you a, um, a situation, a hypothetical situation. Okay, so you are in class, and it's time to take a math test. Okay. I know everyone loves math tests. Some of you actually do like math tests. I hate math. Yeah. Math is the worst. So whether or not you like math, okay, you're in class and it's time to take a math test. And everybody gets 20 minutes to take a math test, except for one student named, one of you have, what? Named Gabe? Okay, named, except for one student named Gabe, okay? Everybody gets 20 minutes, except for one student named Gabriel who gets a half an hour, gets 30 minutes. Is that fair? No, right? Why, why should Gabriel get 30 minutes when everybody else gets 20 minutes? That's not fair. Everybody should get the same, right? I know you could, because you're a math whiz. But in general, right, that's not fair. What if I told you that this fictional student named Gabriel, not this one, has a hard time reading numbers. They, 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 yes, if he has special needs. And he has a hard time reading numbers and maybe he flips them around in his head. It's not that he's, and he, yeah, yeah, it's, but there's a different, it's like dyslexia, but there's another word when it's numbers. So he gets an extra 10 minutes because those numbers slip around in their head. Do you still think that's not fair, or is it fair now? Yeah. It's fair now, yeah. So sometimes in life, we think, oh, it's not fair. When other people get more time, or maybe they get more resources, they get more money, they get more recess, they get more recess that's not fair. But perhaps they need that because they learn differently or because their bodies work differently. So maybe a student would get more recess because it takes them longer to get outside to the playground in the first place because of a disability. And so then they get extra time outside. So they have the same amount of time outside. There are things sometimes that we think aren't fair that really are fair 
Or another word for that is just. It is just, like the word justice. It doesn't feel right. So our Bible story today takes place in a vineyard. Do you know what a vineyard is? Nope. It's where you grow grapes. It comes from the word vine, right? So grapevines. And there's a guy who owns the vineyard. He's very wealthy. And he goes out to hire people. Okay? So all of you are standing out at the crack of dawn and saying, hire me, hire me. So I am going to hire these four. Okay? And I say to you, you come work in my vineyard. I'm the landowner. You come work in my vineyard all day long, and I will pay you $100. Sound good? Okay. So a few hours later, I go back out, and Katie still hasn't found work. So I say, Katie, come, come work in my vineyard. Okay? She's like, okay, cool. And a few hours later, Jackson still hasn't found work. He's been standing around all day. And I say, Jackson, come work in my vineyard. And he's like, yeah, I will. And at almost the end of the day, I go back out, and Gabe still hasn't found a job. He's all day been wandering around. Why will no one hire me? So I say, Gabe, come work in my vineyard. So I agree to pay these four $100, right? How much do you think Katie should get paid? $100, even though she works less? $200. <laughs> How about Gabe? How much should he get paid? He only worked for one hour, and you all worked for 12 hours. How much should Gabe get paid? 50 I think I should get more than they did because um, <laughs> I've just been wandering. I've been wandering around all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in our story, what happens is the landowner, he pays everybody the same amount. No matter how much they work. If they work 12 hours or one hour. Now, how do you think the 12-hour people felt? Angry. Angry. Yeah, they said he only worked for one hour. And we were out here all day in the sun. It's been hot. I've been sweaty. I have blisters on my hands. You should get more. It is a lot. But what if I told you the reason we got this fictional Gabe again? This fictional Gabe didn't get hired because he is very old. Very old. And he can't reach very high. His arthritis in his hands. He can't work very well. That's why no one wanted to hire him. So finally I did because I felt bad. So does he deserve less than those who are able to work? No. It's not his fault that he's old. Right? So this is... So the, the people who worked 12 hours said, that's not fair. But it was, you know, everybody gets $100. I know. Fake money, because I don't have enough money to give everyone $100. So that's not fair, right? You work harder than him. You should get more money. But that's what's just. Because you all can get hired anytime you want. Nobody wants to hire him. But he deserves to be able to eat, too right? So that's the point of the story today. Sometimes it doesn't feel like things are fair, but it's the way they need to be because we all have different needs in different circumstances. And so we should take care of each other, okay? So if you ever come across a situation again, where you say, that's not fair, stop, pause, and think, wait, is this really not fair or do I just not like it? because sometimes others need more. Okay? Can you pray with me? Repeat after me. Thank you, God, Thank you, God for, loving for loving us and caring for us, caring for us as, individuals. as individuals. Help us, Help us to, not to not be concerned with what is fair, what is fair but with what is, right. what is right. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Let us pray. We come together today, O oh God, led by your Holy Spirit, to worship you singing your praises and receiving your love and mercy. Be present among us as we open ourselves to your word. To you be all glory, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Psalm of the day today is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8, and we will be reading from the Inclusive Bible. This is a song of praise to God. Listen now for God's word to us. I will extol you, my God, my ruler, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great you are, Holy One, and greatly to be praised. Your greatness is unfathomable. Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your mighty deeds. They'll speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty, and I will meditate on your wondrous acts. They'll discourse of the power of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They'll celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and I will joyfully sing of your justice. Holy One, you are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Matthew. We'll be reading from chapter 20, verses 1 through 16 from the Common English Bible. This is the parable we have come to know as the laborers in the vineyard. Listen again for God's word to us. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarian, he sent them into his vineyard. Then he went out around nine in the morning and saw others standing around the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again, around noon and then at three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, 
he went and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you just standing around here doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving on finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received a denarian. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarian. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But he replied to one of them, friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give to this one who was hired last the same as I give to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I'm generous? So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know that life is not fair. But you do not call us to a life of fairness. You call us to a life of justice and equity. Help us to be like the landowner, generous with what we have, and not like those laborers who grumble. May we instead celebrate what is given to others. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These past few years, many major companies and educational institutions have placed an emphasis on DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. According to one statistic, the U.S. alone spent $8 billion on diversity training last year, with many more billions spent globally. There has been an increased awareness of the discrepancies in employment and in wages for those in marginalized groups, especially when it comes to gender, race, and ability, and also an increased effort in trying to balance it all. A DEI training, like so many other things, has become politicized. Many things have. And it has even been banned at times by executive order. And this is unfortunate for many reasons. And to me, it only goes to show why we need it in the first place, why we need such training and awareness. Now, diversity and inclusion are not really difficult concepts. Amira Castilla, who's a staff writer for The Root magazine, describes them in this way. Diversity, she says, is ensuring the representation of all identifiers across races, gender identities, sexual orientations, religions, political beliefs, socioeconomic statuses, and more. And inclusion, she says, is making sure that a space is comfortable and welcome, welcoming to every type of person present. So diversity and inclusion, those make sense, we get those. But it's that middle concept, the E in DEI, equity, that throws us for a loop. Even Castilla herself misses the mark when she defines 
it, saying, equity is the fair treatment of all those previously stated identifiers, making sure every person in the environment has the same opportunities, resources, and support. Now, her definition is not necessarily wrong, but it leaves out a really important aspect of equity. Equity is not the same as equality, although we like to use them interchangeably. Equality is like what Castilla describes. Everyone has the same opportunities and resources. And that's a good first step. Equality is a good goal. But equity goes a step further and recognizes that not only should everyone have the same opportunities, but that some people come to these opportunities more equipped than others. And this means that there are certain individuals or certain segments of the population that will need a little more assistance to achieve the same goals. So if you're a visual learner, I have some images um, to do uh, representation. So this is reality, okay? We see here three people trying to look over a fence. Person A on the left can see over just fine. They have no problems. Person B in the middle is too short. Maybe they're a child. And person C on the right uses a wheelchair. And in their seated position, they also cannot see over the fence. So in reality, only one person is able to achieve the goal of seeing over the fence on their own. So say we want to treat them all equally, equality, right? And we give them all the same resource in this case, a wooden box to stand on. This is great for person B. They can finally see over the fence. It was just the boost they needed. And person A, who didn't have an issue before, now stands even taller, and they have an even better view. But for person C, the one who uses a wheelchair, a wooden box is of no use. They remain at that same level, unable to see what their peers can see. All three of them were treated equally. They were all given the same box, but there still remains an imbalance. So that's where equity comes in. Equity recognizes that each person comes with a unique set of circumstances and may require unique assistance to meet the same goal. So in our case, as you can see in the image, equity means that all three people achieve the goal of seeing over the fence. Person A is back on the ground, right where they started, still able to see just fine. Person B keeps their wooden box, which was exactly what they needed. And person C, now gets a ramp. Perhaps the money that would have gone to buying a box for person A was combined with the money allotted to person C so they could build the ramp. Each person is given the resources they need to achieve the same view. This is equity. Thanks, Kyle. And this is what Jesus' parable is all about. A wealthy landowner goes out at dawn to hire day laborers to work in his vineyard, and they agree to work a full day for one denarian. Now, in Scripture, anytime you come across the word denarian or denarius, it means a day's wage. It was subsistence wage. It was minimum wage. It was the lowest amount someone could earn and still make a living. Think, give us this day our daily bread. That's the amount. So that's the agreement for those hired at 6 a.m. One day's work for one day's pay. Throughout the day at 9, noon, 3, and 5, the landowner goes out again to the marketplace and hires more workers. 
And their agreement is also to work until the end of the day, however many hours that means for them. And the landowner says he will pay them what is right. I'll pay you whatever is right. So grateful for work, they agree. And then 6 p.m. comes around, and the landowner pays his hired hands for the day, beginning with those who had only worked an hour. They each receive a denarian, one day's wage, even though they only worked an hour. So when the time comes for those who had worked a full 12-hour shift to receive their pay, they expect more, much more, probably 12 times more. But they, too, each only receive one denarian. Outraged, they lash out at the landowner. We have worked all day for you in the scorching sun, and yet we get the same pay as those who have only been here for an hour? That's not fair. But the landowner pushes back, saying, I paid you what we agreed upon, right? How have I wronged you? Can't I do what I want with what I have? Now, the full day workers are not upset because they think their wage is unfair. It was payment for a full day's work. They had agreed on that at the beginning. They are upset because those who they deem less worthy receive the same amount as them without earning it in their eyes. Now, this type of day labor still happens in our country today, especially in the South and in the West among migrant communities. Workers will gather each morning, and landowners or their representatives will go and they'll hand pick those who they want to come work for them for the day. And who do you think gets picked first? Well, it's those who seem most able, of course. Those who look younger, stronger, healthier, and their counterparts. Those deemed best are chosen first. So in our story, when the landowner comes back to that gathering place throughout the day, he's not just encountering people who were too lazy to get up at dawn. He's hiring laborers who are less attractive, those who look older or weaker, those who perhaps have a physical or mental disability, those who look ill or famished. And if this is the case, if the landowner is hiring less and less attractive laborers, imagine who was left for him to hire at 5 o'clock the most undesirable among them. Those who are lucky to get any work, ever. Those for whom a living wage is not an expectation, but a dream. And the landowner hires them, even them, and pays them a full day's wage. Because he knows that everyone regardless of age or health or ability, deserves a minimum of care. He knows that everyone is worthy of a living wage, even if their circumstances mean they can't earn it on their own, especially if their circumstances mean they can't earn it on their own. Now, to us who live in a capitalist society, this sounds really radical. We are not used to hearing stories of equitable treatment of employees. I'm a female pastor. I have a little bit to say about that. In our society, our economic worth comes from what we produce, how much we work. In our society, we believe that we earn what we deserve. But Jesus proposes something different. Instead of our worth coming from the number of new clients we receive 
or the bushels of crops we pick, or the grades on our homework, or the amount on our paycheck. Jesus says that our worth simply comes from existing. Our worth comes from being a child of God, created in God's image, created with goodness and love. And that's it. By simply existing, we are all worthy of love and compassion and nurture. By simply existing, we are all entitled to a bare minimum of care. By simply existing, we are enough. It may not be fair. And it especially feels pitiful when we are the ones in the position of the full day laborers, the ones who are able, the ones who have earned what we deserve. By our standards, equity is not fair, but it is just, and it is right, and it is who Jesus is calling us to be. May it be so. Amen. Just as God is abundantly generous with us, so we are called to be generous in return, not according to what others give, but according to our own situation. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise in body and spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Generous God, you made us who we are, and we offer all of ourselves to you. Take our talents, our energy, and our joy, and use us to share your love. Take our mistakes, our regrets, and our pain, and use us to bring your healing. Magnify the gifts we give back to you to spread your peace in our community and throughout the world. Amen. Please remain risen as we join together in our unison affirmation of faith. Today's affirmation is adapted from the Confession of Belar, written by the Dutch Reformed Church in 1986 as a confession regarding its role in apartheid. Let us, with one voice, confess the faith of the Church. We believe that God has revealed God's self as the one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people, and is the God of the destitute, the poor, and the wrongs. 
that God supports the downtrodden and protects the stranger, that the church must stand against injustice and with the wronged, so that justice may roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, and that, in following Christ, the church must witness against all the powerful and privileged who selfishly seek their own interests and thus control and harm others. Amen. Please be seated. We come together now to share our joys and our concerns as a community of faith. Today we um, continue to pray for David Brady. He has been out of the ICU for seven days. Up to this point, the longest had been three days. So this is huge for him. Um, Jamie Lynn says that they are allowing him some liquids, but he may have aspirated, so they're watching for pneumonia, but he seems to be on a really good trajectory. And so we continue to pray for his healing, uh, as well as for Jamie Lynn and for Ethan as they stay by his side. We remember those who are grieving today. We pray for the Earhart family as they grieve their neighbor, Jen. We had been praying for her. And so we pray especially for those who loved her and her daughter, uh, her young daughter. I also ask for prayers for the family of Will Ratcliffe, who's a colleague of mine. Um, he passed away this week after a long battle with brain cancer. Uh, so prayers for his wife, Bonnie, and their young son, as well as they grieve. Uh, we lift up Paula Baptiste, who is beginning chemo this week, and we pray for all of those who are living with cancer and going through treatment for cancer. Ellen asks for prayers um, for uh, First St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Elma, New York. We had prayed for them uh, back in May. Their steeple caught on fire, and today they decommissioned their church. Um, after the fire that destroyed it. And so we pray for that congregation as they uh, grieve and move into a new phase of ministry. She also asked for prayers for Louie, who's a three-year-old Maltese, um, who was rescued from a horrible situation, and they are actually bringing him to a foster home in Pittsburgh right now. That's why they're not here today. And so we pray for that situation. And also, Ellen asked for prayers for her Kira. Um, if you know Ellen, you know how much she loves her dogs. And she had some blood work and the results were not good. And so prayers for Ellen as she um, has, may have the strength to make the right decisions when time comes. So if you know her, um, I would encourage reaching out to her. We do also um, celebrate. We celebrate um, weddings. I have some dear friends, Brian and Alex, who are getting married on Thursday, you know, because why not? Um, so this has been a long time coming for them. I was just with Brian uh, in Texas, and I'm very excited for them. We also celebrate with Karen Bryson uh, at the wedding of her granddaughter, Hannah, and her fiance, Chad. Prayers for a beautiful day for them as well. Hopefully, <laughs> yes. And uh, I celebrate today my friend Nikki uh, is being installed, as I said, this afternoon. She's a dear friend of mine, and I'm excited for her. Um, although I have to miss apples, I'll be where I need to be. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Uh, hey, Tom, can you, or somebody, the mic's down here. Greg's not here, David's upstairs, we're a mess. Thank you, Carol Scott. I just like special prayers for my daughter Kelly, who's having a PET scan tomorrow, that she gets good results. We have been praying for Carol's daughter Kelly as she's gone through treatments for cancer, and she has a PET scan tomorrow. So we pray for good results for her. Other joys or concerns this morning?
Last Sunday it was mentioned that our old music director, uh, Jenny Martin, was in labor. She did have the baby last Sunday. Her name's Penelope Lee, and they're calling her Ellie. So, yeah. Penelope. Yay. So we celebrate with Jenny and Zach Martin at the birth of their daughter, Penelope, and we celebrate with their family. This was a long time coming for them. So prayers of joy and health for everyone. Other joys or concerns this morning? Hearing none, then let us turn to God in prayer. Thanks, Tom. God of hope and peace. We have known your love and we have experienced your care and provision. You call us to extend your love to the world around us, caring for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring to you now the needs of our world. We pray for those who do not have what they need to survive. Those without enough food to eat or shelter to protect those without employment or enough money to pay the bills, those without access to medical care or medicine to keep them healthy. We pray for those who don't have enough. And we also pray for those who have more than enough yet continue to feel empty, those struggling to find meaning and purpose in life those turning to alcohol or drugs or other destructive behaviors to numb the pain. We pray for those who entertain thoughts of self-harm or suicide. We pray for those who are struggling physically, emotionally, and mentally, those facing life-threatening disease or injury, those living with chronic illness or pain, those losing mental or physical ability, those facing death, and those preparing to say goodbye. God, we, name, we lift up to you all those we have named here today, those who are grieving and healing, those who are beginning journeys of treatment, and those who are anxiously awaiting answers. We pray for all of the joys we have also lifted before you, for weddings and babies and new ministry. God of the first and the last and all of those in between, your grace reaches out to us. Strengthen us so that we might offer our lives to the building up of your upside down kingdom where the last are first, and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. Be with us in our joys and our sorrows. Walk with us in our celebration and our pain, and may we be there also for one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers, those spoken aloud here today and those we hold in our hearts. And hear us now as we offer to you the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn together.
whether you are the one who is hired at dawn or the one who stands idle all day, whether you are the one who is able to earn or the one who relies on the goodness of others, go now and embrace the hope to which God has called us. Recognize Christ in friend and stranger, and as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to others. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen.